So let's focus, Tyler, on the top half of the tables right now. A lot of people would have assumed that G2 would be in position there if you were to ask people several months ago. They are not there. Mad Lions are there, and already there seems to be this comparison happening, at least if you ask Peter Dunn, the head coach of Mad Lions. Uh, he is not happy with how his team is being perceived or talked about by some people online and by some members of the LEC and League of Legends communities. Essentially, as you can see from the tweet, comparing this splits Mad Lions to peak G2 in 2019, in particular, Setting that expectation, I find this absolutely ridiculous. The fact that people would at, at, try to put some sort of expectation on this young core group of players as mm. if they're going to be performing perfectly like we've seen mm. in the past from other teams, I think this is ludicrous, Tyler. Of course it is. But it, it's, we're talking about esports here. And esports is always, I, and I've said this time and time again, and I think everyone can agree with this, is that. Uh, a year in esports is like five years in traditional sports. Everything yes. needs to be new. Everything yes. needs to be fast. Everything needs to be the next great thing, right? Everything needs to be the best or the next. You need the next Faker. You need the next Caps. You need the next G2. And Mad Lions, a very exciting team, comes in. You have Kaiser. You have, you know, you have Shadow. You have all these really interesting players, and they come up, and this is, you know, it's like it's like Griffin 2018. It's like Damwon 2019. Like, Everyone loves a good rookie supernova story. And I'm, you know, I'm one of them. I love writing about rookie supernova teams. It's fun to see players come out of nowhere to just kind of rise up and take over and, you know, be the rebellion against the old establishment. I think the big difference here is, A, Mad Lions hasn't won anything. Even Griffin, for how, you know, you could say the ending of Griffin was quite, you know, dire. They made three straight L LCK finals. They made it to a World's quarterfinals. Like, they had a proven track record before. Re they had the hype going in the spring split, but it wasn't, or the summer split where they debuted, but it wasn't really until they, you know, made the final. And that's when really you could start talking about them as legitimate, you know, super Nova team. For Mad Lions, comparing them to G2 is ridiculous. Peak G2, I think people are forgetting how dominant G2 was and how they could just play whatever they want, whenever they wanted. It didn't matter about the regular season record. It really, when it came to the playoffs, they dominated. When it went to the MSI, as a, you know, I was there, I saw it in my own eyes Team Liquid go into that final and get ripped shred to shred in that final. It's ridiculous, and it's too much pressure on this young team. And we're in the online era, too, where even the results from an online era don't really stack up compared to playing offline. We don't know how they will stack up in you know a world championship or an international stage playing against Chinese or, you know, Korean teams, even North American teams to an extent. Like, I am feel bad for Mad Lions because it's a lot of pressure on this team. And I think it's a lot more to do so that G2 and Fnatic aren't playing up to the level they should be playing, less so than Mad Lions usurping the Kings, right? Where I do think if they win the LEC, it'll be an amazing accomplishment. But until they actually get to that final, to make it past the semifinals and get to that final moment where they can actually win a best of five versus, you know, maybe a rejuvenated G2, a rejuvenated Fnatic, maybe a Rogue who's finally finding itself in a consistent form, then we can start talking about these, you know, accolades and, and start hyping them into the World Championship. But right now, it's like esports people, esports fans in general, when I, you know, I've been there. I mean, I think we've all been there. We like hyping up new things because everything in esports goes by so quickly that you always want to latch onto something new. I mean, true I think words it have does not a, been said, Tyler. It's so it true. does a huge disservice to Mad Lions as well, like because they're really good at so many things. Like last week, I know I talked about how you can like track their progress as a team from like really early spring, like the first time they met G two to now, and they are like I think a legitimately like strong team fighting team that could get better if they actually like you know, boot camped and just scrimmed Chinese teams for a four, say a 14 day quarantine period before a world's bubble. Um, so I think like the most frustrating thing about this narrative for me is that it takes away like a lot of things that Mad Lions are actually good at right now and, and how they're succeeding. Um, and it takes away from their like marked improvement and how they've adjusted and grown together as a team. Because if you're just using them as like a G2 XP, you're basically saying like, oh, we put all these 
players together and they were amazing from the get-go and this team is like still the next like best thing when i think super team is, yeah no one's in a lot of <laughs> pressure but like that that's taking away from like how all of these players have grown like people did not think humanoid was anywhere near the best <laughs> mid laner uh you know like previously like prior to this split you know like sure shadow i know the big thing is that he was scouted by edg uh and and like that that is like the, the big thing is like, oh, was he going to play in the LPL? But like he he himself has grown as a jungler while in the LEC. Like I feel like you can point out all of these things about these players and how they've grown individually and as a team and forcing them into a G2 narrative takes away from that. So that's what's frustrating for me.